Lesson 10.4, Multi-Step Measurement Word Problems. We can solve multi-step problems that include measurement conversions by recording the given information, convert one of the given units to one of the units we're looking for, and then convert the second given unit to the second unit we're looking for. So here's an example of what we're talking about. Bob drinks one cup of coffee each day. How many pints of coffee does he drink in four weeks? And we think, there are seven days in one week, so he drinks seven cups each week. Seven cups each week times the four weeks is 28 cups of coffee. And there's two cups in one pint. We do 28 cups divided by two cups per pint. That's 14 pints. He drinks 14 pints of coffee in four weeks. We found how many cups he was drinking each week. We took that amount and multiplied it by four weeks and found that he drinks 28 cups in four weeks. Then we had to convert that to pints by dividing it by cups per pint. Mrs. Kim's Bakery sells jumbo blueberry muffins. A box of one dozen weighs four and five tenths pounds. How many ounces does each jumbo muffin weigh? So we think we need to convert four and five tenths pounds to ounces. And be careful, four and five tenths pounds means four and a half pounds. It does not mean four pounds, five ounces, okay? A half of a pound would be eight ounces because one pound is 16 ounces. So be very careful, that's four and a half pounds. We multiply four and five tenths times 16 ounces in each pound and we find that it's 72 ounces. We had one decimal point in the equation, that's one hop. So when we had a seven, a two, and a zero, we had to put that one decimal hop into the product. It came out as 72 ounces. So one dozen muffins weighs 72 ounces. And one dozen is equal to 12, and we divide. 72 divided by 12 in one dozen, and we find that it's six ounces for one muffin. A mole is a small mammal with velvety fur that has powerful forelimbs with large paws that are adapted for digging. They can dig up to 15 feet per hour how many yards could a mole dig in two hours? So we think it told us 15 feet per hour, but it wants yards in two hours. So we need to convert 15 feet to yards and one yard is three feet. We do 15 feet divided by three feet in one yard. That's five yards per hour. If it's 15 feet per hour, it's five yards per hour. And we need two hours, so we do five yards times two hours. That's the amount he digs in one hour. We need two hours. That's 10 yards in two hours. If a mole can dig five yards per hour, about how many days would it take to dig one mile? We think we're talking about yards and miles, and one mile is 1,760 yards we divide to find the number of five yard lengths in one mile for the number of hours. We have 1,760 yards for a mile and each five yards is one hour. We do five fits into 17 three times. Five times three is 15. We subtract and get a two. We drop down the six. Five fits into 26 five times. Five times five is 25. We subtract we get a one, it's the zero's turn to come down. Five fits into 10, two times. And five times two is 10, we subtract and get a zero remainder. And we see that it's 352 hours for the mole to dig one mile. We need it in a, in a estimated amount of days. So we divide to find the number of days in 352 hours. And one day is 24 hours, so we do. 352 divided by 24. 24 can't fit into 3, but it can fit into 35 one time. And 1 times 24 is 24. We subtract, 
we get an 11, and the, it's the two's turn to come down. 24 fits into 112 four times, because 24 times 4 is 96. We subtract and get a 16, and 24 can't fit into 16. So we've learned before that we can add a decimal point and a zero. We drop the zero down. 24 fits into 160 six times, because 24 times 6 is 144. When we subtract, we get another 16. We try dropping down another zero, we get another 144, and this could keep going on and on and on. So let's stop at two sixes in the decimal places. That's 14 and 66 hundredths days. And it says about how many days. So really, the decimals are not very important, except to help us round to the closest ones place. That would be about 15 days. The 6 tells the 4 to round up to a 5. It would be about 15 days for that mole to dig one mile. Tala used two quarts of orange juice to make popsicles. If a single popsicle mole, just one of them, has a four fluid ounce capacity, how many popsicles did she make? We think we need to find how many fluid ounces are in two quarts. Here's one quart, that's two pints, and one pint is two cups, and one cup is eight fluid ounces. So, one cup is eight fluid ounces, so two cups is two times eight fluid ounces, that's 16 fluid ounces. And two cups is equal to one pint, and since two cups is 16 ounces, fluid ounces, that means one pint is 16 fluid ounces. Now, one quart is two pints, so one quart is two times 16 fluid ounces. If one pint is 16, then two would be two times 16. That would be 32 fluid ounces for one quart. She used two quarts, so we do two quarts times that 32 fluid ounces in one quart. That's 64 fluid ounces she used. Each popsicle mold holds four fluid ounces, so we do, we do 64 divided by four, and that's 16. That means Tala made 16 popsicles from two quarts of orange juice. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you've heard me say before that there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. We could have found the number of cups in two quarts, then multiplied the number of cups by eight fluid ounces in each cup. One pint is two cups, so two pints is two times two cups, that's four cups. And two pints is equal to one quart, so one quart is equal to four cups. She had two quarts, so we had two quarts times four cups per quart, that's eight cups. Now, we can multiply the 8 cups times 8 fluid ounces per cup, and we get 64 fluid ounces, just like we did when we did it the other way. And each single mold can hold 4 fluid ounces, so we divide to find the number of popsicles. 4 fits into 64 16 times. She can make 16 popsicles. Dave's truck weighs 3 tons. His son's battery-powered ride-on truck weighs one-fiftieth of that amount. How many pounds does his son's truck weigh? So think, we can convert tons to pounds, then multiply by one-fiftieth, or divide by 50. We learned in video 8.1 that we can multiply by the fraction or divide by the number that, of the denominator. Either way, we'll get the same amount. We have three tons, there's 2,000 pounds, per ton, that's 6,000 pounds. His truck weighs 6,000 pounds. His son's truck is 1 50th of that. 6,000 times 1 50th is 6,000 ths And 6,000 divided by 50 is 120 pounds. So his son's truck weighs 120 pounds. Emma bought a gallon of paint that weighed 12 pounds. How many ounces does one quart of her paint weigh? We think one gallon weighs 12 pounds and there are four quarts in a gallon. We can do the 12 pounds divided by the four quarts per gallon. 
and that's three pounds per quart. We could also do 12 pounds times one-fourth gallon because there's four quarts in a gallon. That would be one quart would be one-fourth of the gallon, and that would give us three pounds per quart. Now we need to convert the three pounds into ounces of weight. Now don't confuse ounces of weight to fluid ounces. One pound for weight is equal to 16 ounces. One quart is equal to 32 fluid ounces. It's very important that that says fluid ounces. Three pounds per quart times 16 ounces per pound. That's 48 ounces for one quart. It's very important to write ounces for weights or fluid ounces for liquid capacity so we don't make a mistake when we convert units. We want to make sure we know the difference between ounces and fluid ounces for liquid capacity or liquid volume. You want to be careful as you're doing these because you don't want to forget to convert one of the units. If you have two different conversions to make, you want to make sure you convert both. Okay? So our next lesson is 10.5. We're going to do metric measures. We're going to compare and convert metric measures to each other. Have a wonderful day. Keep trying hard, and I'll see you next time. Bye.